guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily. If you are new to Lima Bean Living, this is my motherhood channel where I take care of all things mom. Unfortunately, part of my story now is a part of my motherhood journey is including a miscarriage. And in today's video, I thought I would just kind of talk about some random things that have kind of gone through my head in reflecting about my experience that I'm currently going through. If, you, if you're just stumbling upon my channel and you want more details of what my experience was like, you can go ahead and check out my previous video. But this video is going to be kind of a hodgepodge of just random thoughts that come to my mind, so I hope that it doesn't give any of you guys, like, you know, a headache. <laughs> the first thing I, I want to talk about is my perception of what miscarriage would be like prior to actually having one. I think a lot of the things that went through my mind, and I can't say that my thoughts have changed about maybe how people respond to someone who has miscarried. As I mentioned in a previous video, everyone's prayers for me have been incredibly helpful. I really attribute the peace that I feel in my heart to all of the prayers being sent my way. And so if I didn't feel this peaceful, maybe some of the comments that I might mention uh, would rub me the wrong way. But right now, I really just kind of feel like matter of fact, like looking at the situation, it is what it is. This It just happened and that's it. But something, you know, I would think about would be like the a sentence that starts with, well, at least, right? Like for me, my baby died at about seven and a half weeks. I didn't find out until nine and a half weeks. And I'm sure uh, no one said this to me, but you know, it crosses my mind of maybe this is what people are thinking. It's definitely what I probably went through my head is, well, at least I wasn't like six months along. Well, at least it wasn't like a stillbirth. And like I said, right now I'm just matter of fact, very peaceful. That's definitely trying to see the bright side of things. I think any amount of time that you spend holding your baby in your body, the longer you spend with your baby, I think the harder it is to say goodbye. I found out I was pregnant at just like just under five weeks. So I got a good little over a month of knowing I was pregnant, of I mean, I have had a relatively easy pregnancy, so just about a month of no, of having that knowledge that there's a baby growing inside of me, of getting excited. Of I really thought it was a girl, uh, just based on the slight differences between my pregnancies. Thinking about how it will be like, because we have so many pregnant people in my family right now. So I had a month of thinking in that way. And I, I tr do truly imagine that it would be even more difficult for me if I had had those thoughts and imagining the future for more than just one month. I imagine it would still be painful, but maybe not as painful if I had taken a test, found out I was pregnant, and then a week later started to bleed and you know had a miscarriage because that would be a week of knowing, right? still painful, especially if you're trying to get pregnant and you find out that news and then it doesn't happen. Or, I mean, it happens, but you know, then you're losing the baby so soon after finding out. Still incredibly painful. And then I, I mean, thinking of all, along this way, like I said, this is like a hodgepodge video. Thinking along this way, I, I imagine, you know, if I lost any of my like living children right now, uh, I have an almost five-year-old, one and a half-year-old, that would be incredibly painful. I've gotten to know them. I know their personalities. I know the funny things that they do. And to lose one of them now would be incredibly painful. And then I, 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 the, I, I can't say it's the mathematician in me, but I wanted to like create, I guess maybe it is, like a chart of at what point it becomes still painful, but like you've reached your peak, a peak of pain. I wanted to create a numeric measurement of pain for the loss of a loved one. When someone's lived their full life, they're 80, 90, you know, some people get to 100, it's sad, 
but it's more expected. It's part of, you know, the natural way of things that they, you know, just die from old age or whatever. It's sad, but you know, maybe if you were to compare it, not as sad to losing, you know, a, a child at the age of one. And so there's, okay, somewhere in the middle, maybe, maybe you reach your peak and it, it's, it, there's, it's pointless to do that, right? Because it's, it's all painful. And just because someone may have it worse off than you doesn't invalidate your pain or make it any more or less painful for you or whatever. But I think that as humans, we kind of, we want to justify things. For me, I, I like to you know, rank things and have numbers associated with them. And so those were definitely thoughts that went through my mind pre-miscarriage is the, the that comment that starts with, well, at least. And really trying to see like, okay, like things could be worse. But those types of statements aren't really helpful. So I definitely understand someone with a with maybe not as many prayers being sent sent for them. Uh, would take that to be incredibly painful uh, coming from someone who who really just wants to try and help. So kind of in the same line of trying to see the bright side of things, I'm going to say some things that I've reflected on, but in no way would I want the situation to remain the same. If I could have my baby and not have these, the bright side-ness items that I will mention, I, I'd definitely choose having my baby. Uh, but one, some of the things that I was stressed about a little bit while thinking of this pregnancy, Juan and I weren't necessarily trying, you know, we weren't trying for, okay, we were ready for baby number three. This was just a blessing that, that God put in our laps. And, uh, with Aubrey and Jack, they're about three years apart. So having a two year gap, I was a little bit more apprehensive or nervous because, it wasn't, it, we were going to be outnumbered and, and now the, the gap's a little smaller and lately Jack has been more wild and trying to get into things and climbing on everything and the stress of thinking about how I'm going to handle three and have that gap be smaller, that was making me a little bit nervous. Again, if I could have a baby and have that same stress, like I'd, I'd rather have the baby than to, you know, now not have to worry about a closer gap than what I was used to. Also Jack related, he is still nursing, doesn't seem to want to let up. By 15 months, Aubrey was done. She weaned herself. I didn't really try to wean her, it just happened. With Jack, he'll like be like, mama, mama, pa, pa. And then, you know, I just, I, he's saying, please, like, I want your milk. And we're still nursing, like when he wakes up in the morning before his nap, sometimes after his nap, before bed. And if he ever asks me like during the day, like I'm not gonna deny him. I know that, you know, it's recommended even till the age of two and it, and I can, so, you know, I will. And I know it's good for him, but I was stressed because I knew that there was a definite deadline where my milk would no longer be his. It would be the new babies. And I was very concerned about kind of weaning him when he wasn't ready and also then having a very jealous two-year-old when the baby comes because now it's like wait you you said I couldn't have any more milk but now the baby does like definitely something that I was concerned about which I no longer have to be concerned about and I can focus on nursing my son my sister said maybe maybe this will be some comforting, like a comforting experience just to hold my son and nurse him and have that be, you know, somewhat healing. But, you know, that is a bright side. Again, wouldn't, I definitely trade it in for having a baby, but for the time being, I don't have to worry about kind of rushing to wean Jack. Another thing that I was kind of disappointed when I found out was just how out of shape I am. For those of you who have been following me, you know that when we moved into our current house, I had lost like 40 pounds after having Jack. And with all my pregnancies, I gained about 60. So I was doing really well. And then 
for some reason I just packed on like another 20, 25 pounds when I now was like no longer eating out as much. We were eating out a lot in our previous home and like I can't say much changed. I thought it was maybe coffee, I gave up coffee for Lent, didn't lose any weight. Like I'm thinking, what's the matter here? So now, you know, I'm only down like 20 pounds from having given birth to Jack and Jack was almost 11. So like, there's really no excuse. Jack's almost one, like he's one and a half now and I still can't lose this weight. Like I, I've started to do like intermittent fasting. I was doing 36 hour fasts. And then when I found out I was pregnant, I was like, well, I'm not gonna do that anymore. I know that I'm incredibly overweight and the baby will get what the baby needs from my body, whether or not like I fast a little bit, but I, I wasn't gonna do that extreme. Now I know that, okay, well, may, my weight may or may not have attributed to anything. Like my doctor said, like this happens across the board. It's not like, oh, only overweight people have miscarriages. So I know that like, I can't blame myself for not being in the best shape. I am trying to lose weight and I've slowly lost, you know, a few pounds, maybe 10 pounds at most from, the intermittent fasting but now I can I can try those 36 hour fasts again and really try to get my body into a better place where if I do get pregnant I'm not going to be way over my max or overly stressed about any pound I gain I was proud of myself for you know the a little over a month that I knew that I was pregnant I didn't gain any weight at all Whereas with Aubrey, I had already maybe gained like three pounds by this point. So I was doing better about like maintaining and that was kind of my goal for the pregnancy was to maintain my weight as long as I can. And just, you know, know that if I'm maintaining and the baby's growing, then really I'm losing and I'm doing that little math in my head. But now again, I'm gonna use those air quotes, the bright side, I can just try to lose weight and focus on getting healthier and when God is ready to bless us with another baby hopefully I'll be in a better spot I will be tested my I told my doctor about this weight gain and stuff like that and she's gonna test me test my blood for certain things test my thyroid not that I want something to be wrong with me but it definitely would be like a God bringing out the good from a horrible situation type of thing but if I do get tested and there is something wrong with my body making it really hard for me to lose the weight or whatever. I wouldn't have gone into the doctor if it weren't for this pregnancy, like this pregnancy. Had I not gotten pregnant, like I would have just kept trying to lose weight and been like, man, this is tough. I think it's because I'm a mom and taking care of these kids and I am tired and you know, I'm just tired from my responsibilities and I don't have time to work out or I don't make time because I'm just so exhausted. Like whatever the excuse is, I don't think I would have gone into a doctor because I'm not like ill with something or I'm not showing tons of other symptoms. So if there is something that when we, when I go in for these tests and if there is something, I'll, I'll definitely see that God's using this tragic experience to help me get healthy again. If there's not something, then you go back to the whole, well, it is what it is. It just happens sometimes and it just happened to me type of, you know, looking at it. But I don't really want something to be wrong with me. But at the same time, I kind of wish I do and that it's an easy fix. So there will be more to come on that because like, I, I haven't taken any tests or anything. But definitely something that would be a little light at the end of a dark tunnel if it can help me get into a healthier state because I do want to be healthier for my living children and any future children that God blesses with, blesses me with. Something that is, and I think I'll probably wrap up this hodgepodge video uh, here, but something that is kind of annoying because I haven't passed the baby yet as I'm filming today is that I still feel pregnant. I haven't started bleeding or anything. I am so incredibly exhausted and I don't know when that will start to, like when I'll start to feel normal again. I've heard from different, you know, lots of different women reach out to me uh, talking about their miscarriages and their experiences. Some people said that their body thought it was pregnant for months after like, you know, birthing the, the child and 
kind of cleaning house, I guess. And I mean, I wouldn't complain about not having a period for that long, but at the same time, I don't want those extra symptoms. Um, I don't want to feel as exhausted as I do. I mean, I already, I already just felt tired just having the two kids and adding a pregnancy on top of that has been more difficult. So I don't know how that's all going to work itself out, but it's definitely something that is annoying is feeling pregnant, technically being pregnant, but knowing that I'm waiting for that not to be the case. And so I'm playing like two waiting games. I'm waiting for this baby to come out of me and then I'll be waiting to see how long it takes my body to realize that I'm not in fact pregnant. And by that time, you know, maybe Juan and I would have more intentionally said like, you know, let's start trying for baby number three and now it'll be baby number four. So little lima bean number three, will always be our third child. And I was lucky to have known him or her. I'm pretty sure it was a her. I would have been so surprised if it was a boy, but so lucky to have known that I had little Lyme B number three for as long as I did. I have the ultrasound photo and I hope I never lose that because it's the one photo I have of the baby. And I just look at that and think about how loved and excited we were to have that little baby with us. So for its entire life, <laughs> it was incredibly loved by so many more people than just my little tiny family too. So anyways, I will wrap up this hodgepodge video here. For those of you who, ex who are experiencing miscarriage or have experienced miscarriage and want to share your story down below, feel free. Uh, maybe some comments that you found were helpful from people. Like I said, sometimes I don't know like what would make me feel better, but I did have a friend reach out and send us, it was so sweet, send us a Grubhub gift card, which we are saving for when I start bleeding because I imagine that will be a very, very difficult time. But you know, that could be an idea for anyone if you guys know who's experiencing one to take care of the food. You know, even if you're just bringing over dinner or something like that could be, that could be incredibly helpful. But just letting people know that, like continue to check in with them. Don't just say, hey, I'm here for you. And then just kind of leave it at that. Like just even just sending a text, like no need to text me back. I just want to let you know that you're in my prayers. And if you need to talk, definitely text me back, let me know. But there's no you know, you're not obligated, you're the one suffering, you're not obligated to then appease me and take care of me or respond to me. Like, just letting someone know that, that you're thinking about them and praying about them could be good enough as well. So again, hodgepodge, uh, I will keep you guys updated on how things are going. I'm sorry that this video is so long, but it's just, it's stuff that's going through my mind as I'm waiting to have my baby on the other side. So anyways, thank you guys again for your prayers. They have been incredibly helpful. I am so grateful and I will catch you guys in the next one. made it to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday, you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.